Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today I'm sharing my thought process while triaging files on Virus Toto. One word of caution here. I'm sharing some verdicts, but those are just initial verdicts. Those are not final verdicts. So they are more like an indicator if it's worth analyzing this file in depth. For instance, if you want to hunt for new malware. If you are a malware analyst or a malware analyst in training, you shouldn't base your final verdict just on a virus total report or especially not on the detection results of other antivirus vendors. Because as a malware analyst, you specifically get those samples where the uh, AV detections may, might be wrong. And just for that reason, you shouldn't take this as a 100% final verdict when I say, hey, this is my verdict, this is my idea, this file is clean. So the use case, I want to hunt new malware, and is it worth looking into that? So for today's video, I'm going to use the intelligence account. However, most of the things we're going to go through should be applicable as well if you have a standard virus total account or just no virus total account. So the reason I'm using this is because I need to find some samples to begin with. So let's start with that. So for that, I'm gonna choose samples that are not clearly malicious, but where we have some reason for suspicion because at minimum two of the antivirus engines declare it as malicious. So let's see what we get here. And we have some APKs. I don't really want to go through that. So let's start with the first one. We already see here in the overview that it is a zip archive. So I'm gonna open it in a new tab. And we have two signatures that is from Kaspersky, not a virus web tool by Babylon. So this is an indicator when it says not a virus that this is actually pub, so potentially unwanted software that just putting some toolbar in this case, which you may not want in your browser. And we, what I also notice is this is the very same signature name. The reason is that Zone Alarm is probably using Kaspersky's engine. So a lot of times certain parts of antivirus products are sold as OEM. So in this case, I'm pretty sure that Zone Alarm is using Kaspersky's engine here. And the result is actually from just one engine and not two. Let's now look at the details. So this will confirm that it's a zip archive. We see some of the names here, nothing special. It just says it's some sort of unlocker. The relations have some interesting links. However, none of these are detected as malicious. That seems to be the download location for this particular archive. I'm not sure what Malavida is. So this could be just some storage application, looks like it. And here, because we have a, an archive, it lists all of the files that are contained in that archive. And one of the files is password.txt. So what does this tell me? It tells me that most likely the reason that there aren't just two detections on this archive is that this is password protected. Password protected archives are not unpacked by antivirus scanners. They would take too much time to like brute force all of those um, archives. So it's rather interesting that Kaspersky still has a detection despite just having this as information here. So maybe they try some standard passwords. Maybe it's a, a very easy password that Kaspersky is still able to unpack this archive and put a detection on that. So anyways, my verdict is here. This is kind of suspicious, but probably just pub. 
And to know more about this, we would have to unpack the archive and then scan it again. So that would be the best way of action for this particular sample. All right, so let's go to the next one. And again, we have something that's probably potentially unwanted software. So in this case, I see Inu bundle. And if we go to the details tab, we see your Inu setup installer. So what does this mean? Inno Setup is a legitimate uh, application that allows you to build installers. But since we have here some detection names containing the word Inno, it means that Inno Setup in this case has been abused to bundle additional software. So also again, we see here both of the time the same detection name between those two, which is not a coincidence. Um, so yeah, in this case, very likely that this is just some way where the the installer of the software tricks the user into agreeing to additional software onto that uh, that's installed onto their system so most of the time the way these tricks work is like they um, try to make it difficult for you to opt out of the installation of additional software for instance most of the users, they will just click on green next buttons. So you click next, 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 next until you're done with the installation. And they use this laziness and that users don't read everything. And they say maybe in the text, that very convoluted text where it describes, hey, if you click on agree, you also agree to install this additional software. And then the way to uncheck this is maybe hidden and you have to scroll. So... There are some like psychological tricks going on with this. So it's not that interesting. I would like to go actually to the next one that's more likely malicious. So let's see. This also more looks like pub. Now this is interesting because this says Trojan. So let's open this one. And here what I notice is that the detection names are really generic. So all of these don't tell us anything about the threat. It's more likely that such detections are false positives because they were generated by I don't know what. So none of these seem to detect a particular threat. Um, Artemis is just, actually it's from McAfee, a detection module. And I wonder why this is coming up with sky high. I have no idea. But Artemis is just a generic detection module by McAfee. And when you see it at McAfee, it just also means it's a generic signature. Um, Artemis, to make things more difficult, yeah, Artemis is also a malware family. But yeah, most of the time, detection names, it doesn't mean anything at all. So what we see here is WinRa. One of the things that I noticed, it was downloaded or submitted a lot. So the number of submissions is huge. And this is actually uncommon for malware. So I have my doubts that this is a malware file in this case. But let's see what else we can find out. So this is WinRa. We see here some of the names. Um, so here it was a temp file. I don't see anything that's worrisome in particular. WinRAR Archiver, it's signed. It's a valid signature from this one. And nothing out of the ordinary here. Now, how old is it? I usually take the first submission date as an indicator for how long this has been here. Also last analysis date, 17 hours ago, sometimes reanalyzing if this is has been like a few days old, reanalyzing it makes sense. Maybe you get more signatures. Maybe we should actually do this right now and see if anything in those signatures changes. So nothing has changed, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but first submission date, this October, it has been, that means it has been online for two months already. And so this is very, very unlikely malicious. 
given how how widespread it is that the detection names are only generic and that's a low detection rate overall and we have a file that's rather old so with malware that old it's usually it usually has a higher detection rate especially when it's been on virus total for such a long time so that means when it has been on virus total submitted uh, two months ago that it was shared with antivirus vendors also signed validly signed um, let's check on the relations. So this is just where this file has been seen. So it's been on some some interesting shares here. So it's a Russian version of Binra. So now you see here execution parents where you have some of them with a high detection rate. But knowing that this is just WinRA, which is used to extract archives, well, it makes sense that some of the parents that use WinRA are malicious. Why not? But that doesn't have any impact on the maliciousness of the file that we have here. And here we have the bundled files, which I find interesting in this case because it seems that the detection rate stems from this here and this, but this is just the stop for creating an SFX archive. And looking at that, we see here a concrete malware name in JRED. 13 days ago it was analyzed, let's reanalyze. That's a very good candidate for analyzing it again. Well, it definitely didn't get better. So I still have my doubts that this is malicious, but the, it would warrant a, a detailed analysis of this file in particular. Um, now, the detection names are all generic, except for this one, but ClamAV is like not the most reliable source of information when it comes to that. And Ikoro says obfuscated batch. Wow, that's kind of weird. And here we have the verdict corrupt. Uh, the file is most likely not corrupt. We have seen that it kind of works. So it's not like it's not like the, we have a coherent picture here. And I don't think. I, I have my doubts that this is malicious but it definitely needs an analysis. And and by the way, the number of submitters is pretty, pretty high. I, I, I still don't think this is malicious. Um, anyways, let's go to this one. Ethical Encoded 10. That's a little weird. The detection, the <laughs> file name is pretty weird. We have a rather high detection rate. This is interesting. I'll open in a new tab. And now this is also interesting. You see here the same, the very same detection name all over. And the reason for that is Bitdefender. Bitdefender sells or has license for their engine. And all of these products that have the very same detection name shellcode.marta also use Bitdefender's engine. So actually what you see here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times is just Bitdefender. But even those products that have a they're same Avast here, <laughs> by the way. Um, even those products that don't use Bitdefender, they say that something with shellcode is going on. And here we see Rosena. So when you check Mapedia for that, you will see that's also actually just shellcode. So here's Mapedia. Oh, there's no description, that's too bad. But here you see something like analysis of file as malware. Yeah. Um, this is also just a shellcode signature. Crowdsource Java rules, you won't see those, I think, if you have a free account. 
but they hint to Metasploit and Cobalt Strike. So, or Cobalt Strike Stager. So, and the malware contains configuration which uh, belongs to Metasploit. So, this is quite likely malicious. We see the file type is unknown. And uh, that's likely because we have just the shellcode here. And that's also why the detection rate is comparably low. Unknown file types usually cannot be executed. So checking the content and yeah, that's also not available with a standard account. But yeah, this looks like just shellcode. I'm not sure why it has a .exe extension. But anyways, this kind of file cannot be executed without anything else that does the execution. It's likely that someone unpacked the shellcode and then uploaded it here to get some idea what this is. Now in the community tab, you also see some reference to Meta Preta Stager, which is a part of the Meta Sploid Stager. So even though if you don't have the crowdsource Yara rules section here, the community messages are filled with bot comments that also tell you some of those rule matches. So the verdict for me here, yeah, not an executable file, not runnable on its own because it's most likely shellcode. And um, yeah, this is most likely also malicious. So I'm not gonna use this one. It looks like pub again. I would like to concentrate more on other files. So let's look at the next one. It has a pretty weird name, teethandlove.exe. That doesn't kind of sound like a legitimate application, but it has a lot of submitters. And again, such a high number is more likely to be a legitimate application than malware, especially when the detection rate is that low. So let's look into this one. Teeth and love.exe, we see again, detection names are just generic. So it's not really likely that these are actually detecting the malware in there. Last analysis date three hours ago. And we see, oh, first submission has been in May. So I'm pretty sure this is clean. However, the names look kind of weird. This doesn't look legitimate, does it? My, my wife's phone, the last city, what's that, my hot wife? Oh my God, this is, it's not looking good, right? It's not striking any confidence that this file is legitimate. But let's go on, let's see what, we, what else we find here. Execution parents, flare on dating sim. Now that makes me think actually. So the behavior tab tells me Libran Python. That's interesting. So it's some sort of Python application, but it's referencing Libran Python. I'm gonna Google that soon, but let's check the other things in the behavior tab as well. So here it says Windows error reporting and that means that this application crashed when it was executed in the sandbox. And here also the Windows error reporting for .exe has been launched. So that crash that didn't work, that is indicative that this file is actually used together with other files. But simply because when you check the relations, we have like a ton of different execution parents. So this is probably just part of a, a bigger application and doesn't work on its own. So with the contents, hey, you don't have the contents, but there's nothing interesting either except for this, the brand Python DL. Okay, it's time to Google that actually. So Googling that, I land at renpy.org and this seems to be a visual novel engine. So it's a library or framework where you can create games. And that kind of makes sense. So here it's the quick start explains something about RenPy launcher. Make sure you know how the launcher works. 
uh, we see the very same icon that we also saw in all the, our application. So we know, yes, this is being used here. And now everything falls into place. Why? Because we have seen the many different names here. And these are actually all just names of different games that were created with this RenPy launcher. And all of these games use the launcher. So I'm pretty sure that the .exe file here is actually the launcher itself. And it's not actually um, it's containing any of the game specific things. So we have so many different names because the um, application wants the user to click on the launcher. And, but that's the very same executable for every of these games. So that means it's actually a clean file. Also given the how widespread it is and that this does only have generic malware detection names. So let's try to find something malicious. For the next one, let's concentrate on those that have a low submitters rate. So we get more likely new malware that hasn't been detected yet. So the first one we see here is called not suspicious, which is immediately suspicious. Again, we see here only generic signatures. None of those indicate a particular malware family. And that makes it likely that these could be false positives, but maybe they are also just detecting some unknown malware so far. Last analysis date three hours ago. First submission was today. So this is a very new sample and it could have, that could explain a low detection rate. The only name it's been known as is this one. Nothing out of the ordinary here. We see there is there are two IPs contacted and those are the IPs. So you can look them up with who is and see what you find about them. Now, what I find very concerning is this part. So it opens a file called the temp exfil data. And that sounds like this is a stealer. But everything else does indeed not look that suspicious. So I think this is very fishy with the exfil data. The PDB path also rather typical for malware because um, legitimate applications do not use default names like project one or tests or stuff like that. I think this is likely malicious. And if you want to find new malware, this would be a good candidate to analyze this for potentially new malware. Let's look at the next one. The next one with a low detection rate is this DN player and but it's very, very low. However, it says the signature is invalid. So we have here a file that has been signed. The names do not look suspicious. So this is a, a well, LD player 9 that seems to be a legitimate application. However, the signature is broken. So this file has been manipulated. And when you want to analyze this file, the thing you should concentrate on is trying to find where what has been manipulated in this file. So the best way to do that is to find the original file with the very same file version, which is 9062, and then compare this to this very file right here. And then you might may find a malicious patch or you may find that someone just did some modifications related to cracking. So you, we don't know yet, but this could be a new malware, but it's also like not the easiest thing to analyze if you want to find new malware. Finding the patch in a legitimate application is more tedious because those applications tend to be rather huge with a lot of code that is clean. Every finding the malicious code there is a little bit more difficult than with plain malware files. So here we also see a file report to triage. So you could check this, see if anything of that is interesting as well.
Let's go to the next one. I would actually like to try this here. It has a weird name. It's a DLL. We didn't have a DLL yet, I think. Not a virus risk tool, EME startup. So the question is, what's that? And NIM now? So this might be an application that's written in NIM, which would fit to it being UPX packed. And I want to check what this is. So FortiGuard says it's a potentially unwanted software EME startup. So it might just be pub again. This is called SkinSharp Toolkit. And the first thing we get is how to remove SkinSharp Toolkit. Um, so this is very, very likely just pub. So some application you don't want to have on your system because it's doing some risky stuff here. Here we also see this in the file name. So some automated system uploaded this probably. This also stems from an automated system. So likely this is just pub. The embedded URLs hint to Baidu and there's no behavior because it's a DLL. Let's see the community. It's contained in the Melver Bazaar collection. Okay. And it seems that this person analyzed the file and uploaded this to Malware Bazaar. And what we see here is a signature match on Zombie Boy Malware. So it would be interesting if I were to analyze this. One of the things I would do is research what is Zombie Boy Malware, see if there's any similarities to this file here. And I would also check this and see if the file has been tagged with a family. I guess not. It says family none. So what we see here is um, some Yara signatures that match on this file and one of them says shellcode. The others are not particularly suspicious, but shellcode is suspicious. The problem I do have with this is that I cannot check why it matches. So it could be a bad signature, which happens. Um, sometimes you have bad signatures that just have a lot of false positives and we don't know if this is the case here. Writing a signature for shellcode. Okay. That seems to be the rule and it's checking if any of those are at the entry point. So yeah, I would say like three bytes are not much, but then it's specifically at the entry point. I would actually check in this case, what is at the entry point of this application. Is this shellcode or is this something else? So what's at the entry point? So we have here our, well, entry point to the analysis if you were to find out if this is malicious or not. If this is just UPX, I think it's probably false positive. So UPX entry point, I mean, it could be a somehow patch UPX. Somehow I doubt it. Um, but yeah, I, I would still look at that and if it's just a standard UPX entry point, then this rule is probably not that good. So next, let's look at this one. It has an interesting name. That means it has been uploaded by some uh, sandbox system where they use the hash for the file name. And here we see rather high detection rate. It's also quite big. And we have a signature match for Exorist. So this signature comes from Mypedia. You can look up Exorus on Mypedia to find out more about that. But that's basically a term for ransomware that uses XOR for encryption. So it can be different families that fall under this umbrella name. We see here this is a SFX WinRAR FS SFX. So this is a self-extracting archive built with WinRAR. And that means actually we want to unpack this archive. So here we don't have any bundled files. It means we sort of doesn't unpack this. Um, but the first thing I would do with this file is unpack this and then maybe upload parts of the unpacked files to Virus Total as well. And then see um, what we find. The drop file RNZ ran online launcher. So this could also be detected if it's some sort of crack then could be the reason it's being detected as well. Nothing out of the ordinary here. 
yeah, it looks like it's a game launcher, which doesn't automatically mean it's clean. It just means it's a game launcher, most likely. And yeah, because this is a WinRA SFX, we won't see much checking the strings or the content because it just shows the WinRA SFX stuff. So this won't really help. And here we have a collection, Exorist. Uh, so this is in the Mypedia collection for Exorist. It's definitely suspicious, but we can't say anything because Barasoto is not able to unpack this RAR archive. And it might have better detection signatures as well if we have some um, parts of that unpacked and uploaded again here. If you want to learn malware analysis from the ground up, please check the link in the video description below. It contains a coupon link to my Udemy course for beginners.